Welcome everyone. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm so excited to be with you all in the presence of God, and I can't wait for what Jesus is about to do tonight, today, wherever you're watching from. Go ahead and share this with your friends. Don't let, the, don't let them miss out on what God's going to do today. It's going to be such a powerful time where God's going to move in miraculous power. And I know this word is going to bless a lot of you, all of you today. Will you be praying for people? Yes. So today I'm going to pray for people one-on-one on on Instagram Live. We're going to do it through Instagram today. So I've been rotating um, between Zoom Live and Instagram. So today is going to be Instagram Live. So in about one hour or so after I finish teaching, we'll then transition onto Instagram. So if you'd like to be on that live, if you'd like to um, watch it and be a part of it, you can go on to Instagram at that time. And my Instagram is just Apostle Catherine Crick, at Apostle Catherine Crick. You can go on to Instagram at that time. Welcome everyone. Hello, Sophia from Fiji. It's time for you to be free today, Alyssa. Hallelujah. God bless you, Christy. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Let me know where you're watching from. Hello, Janal from Montana. Lola, I declare healing to you in Jesus' name. Hello, Rachel from Norway. Leslie from Pennsylvania. Fowu from South Africa. Hello, Trini Cassie from Florida. Jamie from Singapore, welcome. Alta from Missouri. Scott from New Mexico. Somi from India, hello. Alberta, Australia. Florida, Castroville, Texas, amazing. Chicago, Boston, Canada, Vegas, Long Beach, North Carolina, Malaysia, Oregon, Italy, beautiful. It's so beautiful to join with the body of Christ from all over the world. How special is this? Amen. It's so amazing. UK, Philippines, Amazing. Amazing. Um, This Friday, I'm going to be ministering in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, near Louisville. I'm so excited for what God's going to do there. It's going to be such a powerful time, a powerful move of God. So much healing and deliverance and miracles are going to break out. So if you can get there, get there and don't miss out. It's going to be in a park. Dress appropriately, dress warm, and bring chairs, blankets, and invite all your friends. Don't let them miss out on this. I can't wait. I'm headed there soon, and it's going to be such an amazing move of God. I know it, and I'm excited. Jesus just leaves me in awe every single one of these revival events, every single Sunday. Revival is truly now, and he does new things every time. Just his miracles are so beautiful, so beautiful. Hallelujah. Um, for the details for the Shepherdsville one. So this is near Louisville, Kentucky. Um, for all the details, you can go to 5fchurch.org slash revival schedule. And that link is right in my bio. So if you go to my bio on Instagram or TikTok, um, you'll, see the, you'll see a button that says revival is now itinerary. You can just hit that and you'll find the details there for that event and all of the upcoming ones as well. Um, for every week, I'm ministering in a different state, in a different country, or a different country. Uh, next week, I'm going to be ministering in Orlando for two days. So check it out there and see where I am near you, and don't miss out. 
We'll be live as well this Friday in Kentucky, so you can join us live. Amen, Sharon. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, well, today I'm going to teach on how to pray. How to pray. Lately, I've been teaching on the spirit of religion and how much it's infiltrated the body of Christ, how much it's infiltrated the church, uh, our theology, believers' theology. Most believers in the body of Christ have at least some religious doctrine in them. Uh, like, for example, at least maybe maybe they how they are praying, they are doing it religiously. Or how they are fasting, they are doing it religiously. Or at least one of the scriptures, they are reading it with the spirit, spirit of religion mindset rather than the true spirit of God revelation, really God's heart, really what God means by his word. Um, the devil loves the spirit of religion because it pe- keeps people bound. He loves to use the spirit of religion in the church. This is how he keeps believers from, from knowing God's love and from accessing abundant life. And it's how he gets believers to attack one another through judgment and so much um, uh, division. That's why there are so many denominations. You know, it, it, God doesn't really want it to be so separated. Like, we believe this over here. We believe it's this over here. We believe this over here. Really, I mean, when we go to heaven, we talk to Jesus. It's not like he's going to say, yep, they're right, they're right, they're right, they're right. Like he has his revelation of what he means by his word and what different denominations are. are they are There are certain um, scriptures that they disagree on the interpretation of. So really religion has seeped through the church so much and that's what keeps people in bondage. That's what keeps the power of God from moving Revival is now, and God is destroying the spirit of religion. He's exposing it, and he's cleaning his church. And it's there's no room. There's no room for Pharisees. There's no room for a religion. There's no room for any kind of that gross bondage of religion in his bride, in the bride of Christ. God's purifying his, purifying his bride. We got to be ready for the, for the return of Christ. The, the Bible says we have to be ready. We're not ready yet. And that readying looks like being purified, getting the religious junk out, getting the religious doctrine that causes all this bondage out. So I've been teaching on that a lot lately. You can I really recommend you to watch my past teachings of these past Sundays, this past month at least, um, where I've been teaching what the spirit of religion is and how to identify it, how to identify it in yourself in terms of your relationship with God, and how to identify it in the church, how it's seeped in in the church, and how to spot that's the spirit of religion, how to... Re- how to see what it is and how to reject it so you can be free and be walking in God's love and compassion and abundant life. So um, I taught a couple of weeks ago on how to fast. A big question that I get uh, is how much do you fast? How much do you fast and pray? Because there's a scripture in the Bible that said, where Jesus says to the disciples, uh, this kind of demon this only goes out by fasting and praying. And speaking of religious interpretations of scripture, uh, really that scripture has been interpreted very religiously by a lot of people. So a lot of people think that it means um, like, like when you are not able to cast out a certain demon, that means that you haven't been fasting and praying enough. You need to go home and you need to stop eating food for a, a long time and say religious prayers. And then once you go to that demon, that demon will then leave. So what I just described is the religious way, the religious interpretation of fasting and praying. So I taught a couple of weeks ago on what what fasting really is, what God means when he says fast. 
and how to fast, how to fast properly and not religiously. So definitely check that video out. It's a couple weeks ago I post it. I went live. Um, I'm also going to repost that one because there's a little bit of delay, but the audio is perfect. You can listen to it after this, um, but I'm going to post it with good video and audio matching. So today I want to teach on how to pray, how to pray, not the religious way, but really how to pray in a way that pleases God. Because that verse is true. Some demons do not go out um, without fasting and praying. But, but for many people, it's not the way that they think. They are thinking in it in a religious mindset. Jesus, um, when he said that, he immediately was able to cast the demon out. So he wasn't like, wait, I have to go fast and pray a certain amount of time and then I'll meet up with you again and cast that demon out. No, he was already prepared. That wasn't having to do with religious preparation, but he was spiritually prepared. Uh, fasting and praying really means that you are, or that he's fasting and praying to cast that demon out really means that he'd grown spirit, you've grown spiritually enough where you are less carnal your spirit has risen. Your spirit man has risen and you're less of the flesh. To summarize, uh, fasting many times is meaning to, to identify where the flesh is being strong in your life. Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's watching TV. And you intentionally cut that out. You intentionally deny yourself of that for however long the Holy Spirit leads you to push that flesh down because when that's happening, your flesh is too high in that area. Your flesh is too high in the area of you can't get off social media. You can't stop watching TV. Uh, you can't stop eating desserts or something. Your flesh is too high. So fasting makes your flesh to, be, to go down and your spirit man to rise up. But many people think of it as a religious way of um, only just denying yourself food. There is a time to deny yourself food and I teach all of that in the teaching. But many people think, when I deny myself food, then God will reward me with more anointing. Uh, when really God's really not concerned about the religious rituals, but he's looking at uh, how spiritual you are and how serious you are about pushing your flesh down and becoming more like him and following him with what that's supposed to look like, with how pushing your flesh down is supposed to look like, with what that fasting is supposed to look like. And so the praying side that he's speaking of in the scripture is really having to do with having intimacy with the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm going to teach on today. What does this praying mean that he's talking about? These demons only go out through fasting and praying. Now, I grew up not knowing about the power of God and never really being taught about having a relationship with God. It was more like I went to church every Sunday and I was taught to love God and I did. I naturally did. Like I never doubted his existence and I never doubted that he loved me. Um, I just like a child believe, believed what I was taught since I can remember. Um, and, but I did not really know how to have a relationship with God or what that even was. I just thought for a long time, I believe in God. God's my, Jesus is my Lord. And we go to church every Sunday and we um, sing hymns and we pray before every meal. And I recite a prayer every night and it would be the same prayer that I learned as a child and I would just keep doing that throughout my teenage years and that's like all I knew I really didn't was not taught how to have a relationship with God and I I like needed that I needed that I had a hard time for a while especially when I entered middle school and high school I started to feel insecure um 
because I started to learn about, it's about relationship. It's about relationship. It's about relationship, not religion. So I became like insecure in that time with my relationship with God because I didn't know what that looks like, you know? How do I have a relationship with a God that doesn't really speak audibly or I can't see? You know, the only way I know how to have a relationship are with my friends that I can see and hear, you know? That's kind of where I was at and I, I was insecure for a long time. Um, the devil's voice would speak to me you know, you are not praying enough, you're, um, you're not reading the Bible enough. I would hear that voice a lot. And honestly, because of my lack of knowing how to have a relationship with God, and honestly, my resistance to religious rituals, <laughs> which was just a gift from God, <laughs> my resistance to that made me like stuck and, uh, and not read the Bible much and not pray much. Because deep down, it's like I knew deep down it, it was wrong to be religious about it, you know? Um, it felt weird to say religious prayers that are like rituals um, and, and are not from the heart, you know? So praise God, I learned how to have a relationship with God as time went by how I really learned how to have a relationship with God was by encountering his power. I encountered God's power. And with this encountering of his power, it did a spiritual thing that never happened to me before, which was it opened my spiritual eyes. My spiritual eyes were open where you, you just can't explain, but you know, you know, God loves me. God is with me. God loves everything intimately me God's plans for me are so good it it's like what I had believed so long in the Bible now I knew I knew it I just knew it was truth deep down simply by encountering God's power meeting Jesus tangibly not just hearing about him and in that meeting him my eyes could now see like when you first meet um, your best friend or your your now spouse or something, someone you love in your life that, you know, the first time you met them, maybe there was that instant attraction or that instant chemistry, that instant knowing this person um, is awesome and you feel comfortable around them and you're going to be friends, you're going to be best friends, you just click. You know, you just met one time that person and your eyes have seen, your eyes have seen it's like, it was like that. It was like that. Holy Spirit is a real person. God's a real person. And I got to really meet him that one day about six years ago, um, six and a half years ago, I got to really meet him and everything changed. And so this learning of how to have a relationship happened kind of naturally from that day. It happened naturally from that day where, um, because my spiritual eyes were opened, I could see now all of these places of religion, all of these religious ways of thinking about God was there in me. And God just took that out and showed me who he really was. And I went from not knowing how to have a relationship with God to it being natural, it being really natural to have a relationship with God. So the power of God is very important. And when you are trying to lead someone to Jesus and tell them about Jesus, make sure you don't leave out the, the most important part of, that, of leading them to actually meet Jesus, actually to have an encounter. Uh, because we want people to have a relationship with God, a real relationship with God, not just say, a pr say words but know Jesus in their heart. So, uh, the Holy Spirit's a real person. He is a real person. And this is so important. This is the foundation of your relationship with God, of how to pray, how to pray. He is a real person you're speaking to. To pray. To pray means to talk to God, to communicate with God. And some of us need to be freed and healed of even hearing the words 
pray, you need to pray, you need to pray, you're not praying enough. Some of us have heard that so many times and like me, I didn't even know really what praying meant. I first thought praying meant saying religious words that were not personal and from the heart and it's like just reciting them. I remember in a church, the church I grew up in, we would recite bold letters and this was a prayer to God, but it was just like, uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 you know, like it, it didn't feel like you're really talking to a person, uh, let alone your Lord, your best friend, your father in heaven. You know, that's, that's who he is. That's powerful. He's not some, some far away, unreachable God that's in the sky far away that you're saying this fake pro to. He's with you. He's with you. He's near. He hears you. He hears every word you speak. He's attentive. His eyes are on you. He's looking at you when you speak. So um, for so long, I would feel guilty about not praying enough. So it's so important for you to know, like when you hear pray, be freed of that condemnation you felt in the past of not knowing what that meant, of condemning yourself for not doing it enough and comparing yourself to other people that are praying more. I used to think that God would be the most pleased with me if I um, shut the door and, and prayed for several hours. But when I was doing that, it was more of this like, performance you know it was more of this this like how long can I do this when God wants it to be natural God wants it to be natural God's not looking at your relationship with him analyzing it like like with a checklist he wants you don't do that with with your best friend you do not do that with your best friend. It's natural. You love each other. You love to talk with each other. You love to be with each other. And that's what God wants. He does not want you to see him judging your relationship with him. He does not want you to see him like, oh, good. It's, it's been an hour. You've been praying now. Good. That's way better than you've been doing. So I'm, I'm more pleased with you now. I really looked at God that way for a while. And when you look with the lens of religion, it pushes you away from God. When you see God wrongly, when you see him as condemning and judging you, uh, it, it doesn't make you draw near to him. It, 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 it fills you with shame and condemnation. When you're, when, you're looking, when you're looking at him, looking at you with judgment, you feel embarrassed. This is, what, this is what happened with Adam and Eve. They had such intimacy with God and they were naked and they didn't even notice it. They were so comfortable with God. They were so intimate with God. And then one day the devil spoke to them, you should, you should be ashamed of yourselves. He spoke that, that lie to them. They should have... They should have known that God was the father of the prodigal son who when you mess up, he's looking at you with love, his arms wide open, and he wants you to just run into his arms, say sorry, but know that he's not condemning you or judging you. He just wants you to run back in his arms. And when you run back in his arms and receive his love, that's actually the only way to be able to repent. You made a mistake. The only way to be able to repent and not stay in sin is to run into God's arms and receive his love. It's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. When you see how kind and loving Jesus is, when you're seeing him rightly, that supernaturally gives you the power of God in your heart comes upon you to be able to repent, to desire to, to repent, to have the ability to repent. But when you don't see God rightly and you're seeing him with judgment, you become like Adam and Eve who hide themselves. When they were naked, they covered themselves. They hid from God. God was like, where are you? Why are you hiding? Who told you you're naked? What, what, what lies are you believing in your head about me? I just want you to run into my arms and receive my love so I can help you not sin again. It's okay. I forgive you. I love you. That's how God is. 
So for me, so long in my life, I didn't see God that way, but I saw him judging me that I wasn't praying enough, that I wasn't reading the Bible enough. And so that didn't help the case. It made it worse. It made it be like, I didn't know why, but I would want to read the Bible every day and pray, but it like wouldn't happen. It became this bondage simply because of that spirit of religion blinding me. So um, God doesn't want religious prayers. He wants it to be real and from your heart because he's a real person. To pray means to talk with God, to communicate with him. And there are different ways to communicate with God, different ways to talk to him. Uh, Our God, Jesus, when we look at him, we need to see him in all of his facets to all who he is to us so that we can have the healthiest relationship and so that we can please his heart the most and so we can pray in the way that will please him the most. So we need to see him as our father, as our heavenly father. So we have that respect that we have to a father, our heavenly father, and we know that our father is guiding us and is protecting us and we can be safe in his arms so when you communicate with God make sure you're you're always seeing him reminding yourself he's my father I can crawl up into his arms like you would as a young child crawling on the lap of your father and just when you spend time with him you can see see him in that way that you can be comforted by him you can feel safe in him And you can speak to him as a father and listen to him as a father leading you, guiding you, and giving you wisdom. Also, we need to see God as Lord. We need to have that reverence that goes beyond how you see a natural father. We need to have that reverence every day that he is Lord. This helps you to have the fear of God. This helps you to carry that fear, that reverence of God, that you are wanting to please him every day. It's so important that you're seeing him as Lord every day because otherwise you can become casual, too casual with him and you can forget about the importance of pleasing your Lord. He's your master, he's your Lord, and you're his servant. You're his servant. Um, Also, you need to see God as your best friend. Holy Spirit is your best friend. He, He loves you greater. He loves you greater than your best friend on this earth. He loves you more than that. And he sees you as a greater friend than anybody on this earth. Like his passion for you is that passion that you feel for your best friend, but way more. And this is so important to always be seeing God as your best friend, not some God that's far away and that's judging you, but a best friend who just wants to be with you, wants to hear from you, wants to be intimate with you, wants to communicate with you, wants to be brought in your life. So these are the foundations, is to see God properly. See God for who he is and all the ways that he is to you. And then communicate with him, knowing that he's all these things. Just like we have on earth, you know, my my parents were both my teachers. So, and my mom is my mom, but she was also my best friend. So I kind of had, I had to have all three with her. I had to have reverence for her in band when I would sit and play the flute. I would not treat her like my mom or my friend. I would have respect for her there. She was Mrs. Crick there. Um, And then she's my best friend. But then there was a place I would have to have respect for her. Of course, that was hard in middle school and high school. But there's these different roles that you need to understand. God is all of them. And to keep that in your heart and mind always and renew your mind who he is to you. So once you know that, now we can get into what prayer really looks like.
So Matthew 6, 6, it says, When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now many people, including myself, have seen this verse in the religious way as if going into your room and praying religious prayers that aren't personal and doing it just as performance is going to make God happy with you and will make God reward you. But really, the the revelation of this scripture is that you should be closing the door anywhere. It doesn't have to be a room, but it is you and God intimately having your relationship. It should not just be in church that you pray. It should not just be in front of people that you pray. You know, sometimes we don't really pray to God, but then we want to look spiritual in front of people. So in the Bible study or in the meal, we'll pray this prayer we've never even prayed before that sounds so fancy, um, like to show I'm spiritual. So this is what this scripture's meaning is to just not be fake before God and to not be uh, trying to show off that you are spiritual, but to just be real with God, have a real relationship with him and let your prayers be real prayers and from your heart. Um, The first type of prayer I want to talk about is the prayer that you have with God as a best friend. So, Remember that God is always with you. He never leaves you. And so I want you to think about now a friend in your life that goes with you a lot, that is with you a lot. You know, maybe you drive in the car a lot. Maybe you travel a lot. Maybe you do a lot of things together. I just want you to think about that for a moment and, and what always being with them looks like. It looks like talking, but also looks like sometimes you're with each other so much that there's silence, but there's still intimacy and, and it's, it's beautiful. Sometimes the silence is beautiful and you don't need to be talking nonstop for there to be intimacy. You don't need to be talking nonstop even for there to be communication. You don't need to be talking nonstop for there to be love shown and love received, but it's this natural, um, just enjoying being with one another and just being aware that they are with you and loving on them and doing life together. So with God, God wants you to have this revelation that he is with you always, that he never leaves you. He wants you to bring him everywhere with you. Do not just bring him religiously in your room and shut the door And you pray religious prayers and then you forget about him the rest of the day. This is this religious way that many of us have um, fallen into and we have no intimacy with God and we feel condemnation and everything because of that. God wants you to have relationship with him always to renew your mind that he is with you everywhere you go and he is just as much with you in the car in church on this live right now while you're cooking while you're with people in work on the couch he he's with you just as much in all those places than when it when you're alone by yourself and 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 praying and like like spending time talking to God praying he's with you just as much and because God is invisible unseen many people are not spiritual and forget about this and so they live their lives completely carnal forgetting God is with you he's with you in every moment you don't have to, to wait till you're alone to engage with him, to, to talk with him, to love on him, to receive his love. He, he wants you to be intimate with him always and include him in, in everything you do. Have that awareness. So um, 
this is this is intimacy and this is relationship that you are doing life with God every day you're bringing him you're bringing him with you everywhere and you're talking sometimes little things you know sometimes I'll just be in the air air and the airplane and I'll just mutter little things to God I'll just say thank you God um I'm so grateful you're so good just randomly I'll just mutter little things like I renew my mind that he's he, he might as well just be sitting right next to me everywhere. He's with me. He never leaves me. And he's listening to me always. And he's speaking to me. So um, that's really important to understand that prayer isn't this religious ritual that you only do um, when you are by yourself, but that you can talk to God, pray anywhere, everywhere. You can whisper it sometimes. And God knows your thoughts. So even when you're not in a place where you can speak aloud, you can pray to God in your mind. You can tell him something in your mind when you can't. Hallelujah. Um, And I want to also share now Mark 11, 23. It says, truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt it in their heart, but believes that what they will say will happen, it will be done for them. So Jesus is saying, when you say to this mountain, throw it, it will be, it it will happen. If you believe what you say will happen, it will happen. So now I want to teach, teach you how to pray for God's will to be done for things to happen in your life. So there's this first part of prayer, which is just communion with God um, as a friend and just speaking as a friend to him, thanking him, including him throughout your day as a friend. And then there's also the part of prayer, which is praying for God's will to be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. So many people are have been praying prayers, wanting things to happen in their life, and wanting God's will to be done in their life, but they've been praying it without results. They've been praying ineffective prayers because they're not praying it correctly. Now, in this verse, we see how Jesus, how Jesus is saying, you need to speak to the mountain. When, I, when you want this spiritual mountain to move, because it's this demonic spiritual mountain, and it is my will for the demonic spiritual mountains to be removed and God's will to be done. It's In the word, it clearly shows us God's will, that abundant life is God's will, that darkness is not God's will, that It is God's will for his people to be free and to be healed and to walk in abundant life. So that when we see darkness, we know it's God's will for that darkness to be removed out of other people's lives, out of our own lives. So when you pray, it's important to know God's will. So you're not just praying out of your own desires. You need to read the word of God so you can know God's heart, so you can know God's will. So you can pray the right prayers. So the prayers can be effective. But also, we need to pray the prayers the right way. So Jesus says, speak to the mountain. He also says, cast out the demons. We see Jesus' example. Jesus' example, how he would say, demons, go. He's He's using authority. So we have been given authority ever since Adam and Eve we were given authority on this earth. Then they lost it. Jesus returned the keys of authority to us. So now we have been given authority on this earth over all darkness. So God wants us to bring his kingdom to this earth. He wants to partner with us. This is how he brings his kingdom to this earth is he partners with us. And so a big way that we see the kingdom of God come to this earth is by praying God's will to be done. 
but praying the correct way, praying the effective prayers, which is speaking with authority. Speak, the mountain must move. You are praying when you are doing that. This demon must leave you. This is praying. This is the other form of praying. This is speaking God's will to be done. This sickness must leave. This is how we are supposed to pray for God's will to be done. For so long, uh, people have been not having revelation of the authority that God's given them. Jesus said, you cast out demons. He didn't say, pray to me to cast out the demons. He says, I've given you authority over all powers of darkness. You cast out demons. So God has chosen to give us authority. He's put his power in us, his anointing in us for those who can be entrusted with the anointing. Now he's calling us to walk in that authority, to speak with authority. His power then backs up those words. And because he's given us that authority, that darkness has to leave. We have to, we have to pray with this revelation of the authority that God's given us. Too often people are praying, God do this, God do this, God do this, God do this. When God's saying, I've told you to do it. I've told you to speak it. When you speak it is when my power can come and back up your words and move. So practically, like if it's your own life, where you see, when you don't see abundance in your life, you need to pray, but you need to pray the right way. You need to pray with authority. Just as you see how I speak with authority, how I say demons go, that's how you need to pray over your own life for whatever darkness is there, whatever lack is not there. So if there is lack of finances, you should be declaring, you know it's God's will for you to not be, have poverty, not be in poverty, but to walk an abundant life in every area for you to not be in lack. God has supplied all of your needs. Everything is there. So now we need to access them in the spiritual realm. We access them by speaking, declaring God's will to be done using the authority God's given us. Many times people are thinking like God's holding all these things and we need to pray, God, give me this, give me this, give me this. But Jesus has already given you the inheritance of abundant life. By his stripes, you are healed. It is God's will for the sickness to go. So God wants us to know this inheritance that we already have this inheritance that we already have is like presents under a Christmas tree. And now we need to actually go and open them. We, we need to, they're already there. We don't have to ask God to give us the gift. Abundant life, what Jesus has provided for you on the cross is already yours. So now we need to use the authority God's given us to access that faith and walking in that authority speaking God's will to be done. So all of the ways the devil's trying to block us from receiving what's already ours, we speak to that mountain, you must move because I must receive what God's given me. We need to see it that way. God wants us to see it, God wants us to see it that way. Too often people are, 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 are complaining to God, whining to God, and, and God is like, you're missing revelation. It's already there for you. I love you so much. Jesus paid this, the, the biggest price that could ever be paid for you to have these things. You don't need to act like they're not yours. And why is God withholding them? They are yours, but we need to just do things God's way, walk in our authority so that we are following the spiritual laws. There's laws in the spiritual realm. We need to get in order, do things the right way in the spiritual realm for the darkness to obey, for the, for the mountains to move. 
So if there's not finances in your life, if there's a lack of finances, you can say, poverty is not my portion. Abundant life is my portion. This is my inheritance. You can start speaking these things, declaring these things. I will not have lack. I speak doors to open for provision to come in my life. I declare every blockage of my, blocking my finances, blocking me to have a job. They must be removed now in Jesus' name. You speak like this. There's sickness in your life. Instead of saying, God, take the sickness away. God, heal me. Speak. By his stripes, I am healed. Jesus has provided healing for me. He endured lashings on that cross for me to have healing. So the sickness in my body, it cannot stay. I speak to the sickness. The sickness must go. I, I rebuke those words that were spoken to me, those diagnoses. I reject those diagnoses. I break any word curses of sickness spoken over me. I don't receive that. I don't receive any word of sickness. I don't receive any diagnosis of sickness. And maybe you feel it. Maybe you feel pain. Maybe you feel sickness. But you don't verbalize that you feel these things. But you speak to the mountain. You use your authority to access what God's provided for you. I declare I am healed. I am healed. I thank you, Jesus, for healing me. I thank you, Jesus, for healing me. God wants to see faith-filled prayers. He wants to see, this touches his heart, when you pray effectively, when you don't pray carnally, when you don't pray carnally, God do this, God do this, God give me this, God, which is not, it's not doing anything because that's not how we're supposed to pray in the spiritual realm. So it's just like, it's doing nothing. God wants you to wake up and be mature in the spiritual realm and have faith and, 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 and just have that revelation that Jesus is so good. He's not withholding anything from you. Have that revelation. Oh, Jesus, you paid such a price for me and I thank you. I thank you and I will see the fullness of what you provided for me. I will see the fullness of this. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the reason there might be lack in your life is not because of God, it's because of the devil. But Jesus has the victory. We need to have that mindset. Don't blame God. Don't blame, don't, don't complain to God. There's so many things that we don't understand. So have that humility before God. Have that humility before God. Like, I know, I know we feel like, well, God's all powerful. How come he can't do this? I know we have those feelings, but come on, God's God and we're creation. So we shouldn't let our mind go there. We should vow to always be reverent before God. And just, we should just vow to never complain. We should just renew our minds that the devil is really nasty and really evil and really tricky and we need our spiritual eyes opened up more. We need God's grace more to have complete victory over him. So it's not about, it's not God doing any, withholding anything. It's that we need to mature to have constant and complete victory over the devil. And God is the one that's helping us do that when we humble ourselves. God gives grace to the humble. We need grace. So this really pleases God. This, is, this pleases God to pray these kind of prayers with faith and without complaining to God. Many people are like, oh God, come on. I've been praying for this for so long. and Why isn't it happening? The Bible says you cannot please God without faith. And so when you want to please God, when you want to touch his heart, remember that, that faith pleases him. And remember that he says we will do greater things than he did. The way we get to that level is by being spiritual, is by having strong faith, is by not being of this world, is by taking thoughts captive to Christ that make us want to complain and make us want to be carnal. 
you know, so we need to have this revelation. I want to please God. So I'm going to pray a certain way. I'm not going to pray the way that I want to pray, but I'm going to pray in a way that's effective and that will please God and touch his heart. So when I see things in my life where there's, let's say, lack, where I see we need God's kingdom, we need God's kingdom. It's not here in this area. We need it. I declare, I speak it over my life, over others' lives, over the ministry. I, I declare it. I speak it. And I thank God. Um, going back to relationship with God in terms of um, friendship with God, in terms of the kind of way to pray, to pray to God as a friend. Um, there's something I want to share with you about this. Um, I would, I used to get even, so I used to get so insecure about my relationship with God because I, I didn't like know what to say. Like I would run out of things to say. Um, and especially when you don't hear God audibly, it's really different than having a conversation with a, someone in person, right? It's, it can just be hard, you know? And I would really struggle with like, I feeling like I didn't pray enough because I didn't know what else to say. And I didn't want to be religious where I'm just like saying nonsense, you know, to like try to perform to God. Religious rituals, you know, like thou, don't, don't speak to God in like normal language. Like thou art, I dost, like, Speak normally to God. Speak really you. Because when you start to speak unnaturally, that, that's the spirit of religion infiltrating and can, can just start to blind you with religion. Talk normal, like how you talk to your best friend. Talk with your own vocabulary and speak from the heart. And don't be judging yourself as you are praying. Don't be analyzing the words coming out of your mouth. Um, oh, I think this sounds really spiritual. No, just speak from the heart. Speak real and stop thinking about yourself. But look at God. You're having a conversation. You're having a relationship with him. So I would be really insecure because I would run out of things to say. And then God taught me something. And God taught me something. So when my faith grew so much and I learned how to pray in a way that's the right way of declaring God's will to be done. I relaxed in God. I rested in God. I trusted him. And it's like whenever I was going through hard times, like wilderness seasons, like I didn't have enough money sometimes, you know, backstabbing, betrayals, jealousy, all of that, like once I entered the anointing and my calling, God had really opened my eyes spiritually so much that I knew I was in his will and I could trust him. And when I saw these things that happened in my life where other people might be like complaining to God, like, why is this happening, God? Why is this happening? I'm, I'm serving you. I'm working so hard. And how come, you know, I have less money now than before and I'm struggling and and I don't know how to pay rent for the church. And God, what is happening? And, and why are people being mean to me for no reason and jealous and, and leaving? And why are more people leaving than, than coming? And it's been years now of this. Like, one might be praying that way, commuting, communicating to God in that way, like complaining slash confused and just be rattling it all off. But glory to God Glory to God. God gave me grace to feel confident that I was in his will. And I thank God for my mentor because God really used him to encourage me so much that I was in his will and that God was proud of me and to trust God. And that I was just going through the wilderness, you know, and I, I mean, really from the beginning, from the beginning, five and a half years ago, glory to God, I was in this place of just trusting God where I would see these crazy attacks happen to me, um, spiritual warfare, betrayals, not having enough money, all these things. And um, I like instantly knew what was going on in the spiritual realm. 
Like I instantly knew like, man, I didn't expect this to happen, but this is the wilderness. This is the process. The devil's really, really mad at me. The devil's really terrified of this anointing. So he's attacking, but this is what God does. This is what he does in the Bible. He uses what the devil meant for harm for our good, for our refining of refining fire in our hearts, for molding our hearts. This is what God does. Like I simply <laughs> like grasped what was going on in the spiritual realm. And I trusted God. I trusted him. So, and 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 I really didn't I I really didn't want to complain to God. I really just wanted to please him. I wanted to please him with my every word. Let the words of my heart, the medi- let, the, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. It says in the Bible, uh, 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 that's how I felt. And so <laughs> sometimes that would lead to like, well, what do I say? What do I say to God then? But God taught me because an uh, other person might have a lot to say. Like, why is this happening? And then this person, God, how could you allow that to happen? <laughs> Complaining or, you know, revisiting the whole nonsense of the devil's attack and everything but God taught me to just be quiet and thank him so when things were hard and like I I would declare when you know when there wasn't finances coming in like it was a lack like I've never seen I would declare I would speak simply like I declare open doors to come for provision I am not in lack I, I must have abundance in Jesus' name. Like I would speak a simple prayer. I would speak simple words. And then I believed that there was power behind my words and that God heard my words. And that's it. That's all I did. And then from there, I would just thank God. Just thank God. Um, and when I would have, you know, crazy spiritual attacks and people do crazy things and betrayals and all of these things, Um, I just knew, okay, I know what's going on in the spiritual realm. I'm being refined. This is the testing. So I bless them. Thank you, Jesus, for taking me through the refining fire. I know I need this. I would say it through tears sometimes when it was hard, when I wanted to complain. When, you know, I would just say it through tears. Thank you, Lord. I don't even deserve what you've called me to. And so you can just do what you want. You can take all the time you need, even though I didn't want that. I was like, this is, but I would humble myself. You can take all the time you need, God. I trust you. I'm so glad that you're in control and that you have the perfect plan. You know exactly the the time frame, exactly the kind of refining fire that needs to happen to me. I don't, I, I thank you, God, that I can rest. I can just go through it. I can go through the fire, but you have it all set up. You know, thank you. I would pray those kind of prayers. Pray it simple. Thank you. And I would worship him. So to be truthful, my prayer life to this day, ever since God taught me this, my prayer life to this day looks like mostly thanksgiving and praise. Because I trust God. I trust God. And so when I see that there's lack in some area, I speak the word, I speak God's will to be done, and simply I believe that that word has power and God's heard that word. I don't need to religiously repeat it millions of times. I speak the word and I thank God and I praise him. I used to be so insecure that I didn't have enough words to say to God, but then God taught me that it's enough to thank him. <laughs> it's enough to praise him. I don't have to, I used to honestly myself be insecure when I was with people like in middle school and high school. I was, well, middle, middle school, I was like the shyest person in my class. I transferred from a school of 15 people in my entire grade, five boys and 10 girls. And to be truthful, I just like didn't have social skills or something. Uh, like I didn't know how to interact with people I didn't know because I like never met new people. So I transferred to a school in sixth grade uh, where there's 80 people in my class. And I like didn't know how to talk to people I didn't know. I was just like silent. And I remember one time a person, like I said something and a person like looked behind them in their desk and was like, did she just talk? Like I was that quiet. I was that shy. And I was really insecure about it. I was even 
I, w I was afraid I was going to be voted most quiet in the senior year. But instead, because God transformed me, I was voted most changed since ninth grade. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm obviously not that way now. Now I'm very outgoing. Um, God did a huge work in me. But I used to battle with insecurity uh, of like socially, like that I was quiet, that I, like if I was in a car with somebody, I would feel like I would have to talk. I would feel like, if I'm not talking, they think I'm weird. They think something's wrong with me. And I just had that insecurity. Um, so I saw how at first that came in with my relationship with God. And God taught me, um, you don't, it's not about the amount of words, but it's about your heart. It's intimacy with God. Remember what I said about when you're with a friend, you can, when you're with a friend all the time, you're not going to be talking all the time. If you are, you're probably talking about nonsense, <laughs> stuff that's not fruitful, but um, you run out of things to say and you, you just, you just sit with each other and it's still intimacy. Um, and, and with God, we, we shouldn't have, you know, fruitless prayers. We shouldn't just, to anybody, we shouldn't say careless words. We shouldn't just talk with no purpose, but we should talk with purpose. So, now I rest in my relationship with God where I don't analyze my words, the amount of words that I'm saying, but I, I just remember to thank him. I thank him and I praise him. Those are my biggest times of prayer. With That's the biggest way I pray to God is by thanking him continually and praising him, worshiping him through different ways, through song. I love worship music. I love to always have worship music playing like in the car, in the shower, and I intentionally worship God, but that's like my prayer with God too. That's my communication with God, my relationship with him. Like I really think about the words and I mean it. I don't just sing the words, but I really mean it. And I'm, I'm talking to God. I'm telling him what I think about him, that he's worthy, that he's good, that he's faithful, that I love him as I'm singing. So singing can be prayer too. Uh, for me, singing is a lot of prayer, or my prayers a lot are, are singing as well. Um, so, and and just always remembering to include him, like every time before I go to minister, I just remember, even though I minister so many times, I, I, I always try to remember, I always rem bring him in, you know, remember that I need him and invite invite him with me to minister, that it's not just me doing it. And, and sometimes if you were, I mean, it's not about the religiousness of it though. It's about your heart. So you really don't need to be like, Oh, I have to say this prayer. Um, God, okay. Have your way as I go to minister right now, have your way. And, and it, like it, that can be religious when you think that, that it's, it has to be your words because God looks at the heart. And so when your heart is like, Lord, like that's your heart. Like I can do nothing without you and I need you all the time. And so like, for example, if, if, if God needs you to like minister really fast somewhere, someone's like, go minister fast. And there, there's not like a time to like say out loud, I invite you in God. You know, it's not, it, it, it's the same when your heart's there, when your heart's there, it's so important to, to not pray religiously. Oh, I, I have to say this. You don't even have to be that way for, for meals. Like a re Many people think, feel like they have to pray before every single meal because they're forgetting the revelation that God's with you always. And so it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Now we're inviting God to dinner just for a minute and then we're not seeing him the rest of the day. Like a lot of people like, like really have that wrong religious revelation as they're praying. So like, you don't need to condemn yourself if you are not praying before a meal. What's some, what God cares about is that you are including him everywhere. You including him, whether you say the, okay, we're praying before the meal or not. That's what God cares about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And um, also the Bible talks about you have not because you've asked not. And so I, I've, I've, been, I've been teaching you about how to pray in terms of relationship, friendship with the Holy Spirit and f friendship and relationship with the Lord as your father, like seeing him in that way. And I've been teaching you, secondly, 
about how to pray for things that you need that are God's will, how to bring God's will to this earth through prayer. And um, now I want to also include asking him for things. So there are some, there are many things which we know is, is God's, is God's absolute will. Like when there's lack in your life in any area, when there's sickness, when there's division in the family and relationships, when there's rage, anger, when there's, um, lack of finances, uh, when there's lack of peace, when there's anxiety, when there's depression, this is a given. I mean, this is God's will for all of that to go away. You can confidently speak God's will. This anxiety must leave. I have perfect peace. I thank you, Jesus, for giving me perfect peace. Um, but then there's could be time where you don't really know what God's will is and you need to seek him about that and, 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 and bring him in that, invite him, ask him about that. So, for example, um, I was working a part-time nannying job the first year that I was ministering, and I had, like, no time to do anything but just prepare the, the message for Sunday and preach on Sunday, and that was, and that was like, it. Uh, and the church was really small. The church had, like, 15 people or so that year, give or take, and... Um, I was, I think about uh, like nine months had passed of having church every Sunday and me doing the nannying job. And I felt that conflict of like, like I heard the prophecies. Like I I knew that what's happening now was going to happen. Like, and I I believed it. I knew it. I knew it. So I knew that the nannying job was going to have to end someday. I knew that it was God's will for me to be full-time ministry. I knew that 100%. But I know that God takes us in stages um, and he gives us little and sees if we'll be faithful with little before he can entrust us with more and lift us. So I knew that. Uh, and so, but I'm working this nannying job and I'm like feeling conflicted. I'm like, man, I wish I could do more for ministry. Like I wasn't putting out any kind of content. I wasn't putting out any kind of quotes, like encouraging words or videos at that time at all. No videos at all. Nothing. It was nothing. It was literally just like church on Sunday, a graphic or something maybe. And that was it. That was it. So I'm like, I felt this conflict. Like, man, I have a passion to do God's work and I know this is God's will. And this nannying is just like, it feels like a, in the way. Uh, I felt this conflict, but I, but like, I thought that the church would have to grow to be really big for that to be like possible for me to be able to leave that job, you know? So I wasn't even like praying for, I wasn't like declaring, like I declare full-time ministry. I declare, um, this God to make a way doors to open and Lord make a way. I wasn't even praying that, um, because I hadn't seen it before. And I hadn't believed that I I wasn't believing like this could be possible for God to just remove this job and open doors that didn't involve the church being massive all of a sudden. So then I happened to see a movie that was a Christian movie about a real story about a Christian band and the lead singer of this Christian band. Um, He was writing music and his dad in the movie, this is a real story. So I'm watching it. His dad decides to give him a check and he says, "Um, God put on my heart that he wants me to support you financially so you can stop um, all the side jobs you're doing so you can focus completely on, uh, God's will for your life on, 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 on the music. This is, I believe in that God has really given you this dream. And as soon as I saw that part in the movie, I started, Holy Spirit hit me and I started like sobbing Well, I was just trying to control the sobs. If I was home, I would have been like sobbing like crazy. It was just Holy Spirit hit me. What happened was the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So, um, testimonies release faith. Testimonies prophesy. Testimonies speak something to you like this can happen for you. And I never knew that could happen for me until I heard that testimony. So I heard that testimony and spiritually, like just faith, just like whoop, faith just like entered me. (gasps) That made me like stop. It was so beautiful and supernatural, but literally faith just entered me and, and I was just convicted like God can do anything. If he could do that for that guy, 
he can do it for you. And um, I was convicted. God brought me that scripture. You have not because you ask not. So I was convicted. I prayed that day and I prayed a different kind of prayer, which is what I'm going to teach you now, which wasn't like, I declare for doors to open now for me to not have this job. But I, since I, I wanted to be reverent and respectful to God in this situation, um, cause it's one of those areas where you're like, I don't know what your timing, your will, Lord, of your timing. So like, you know, for example, that little boy that I was nannying, he gave his life to Jesus in my car. He came from a Jewish family and his mom was like really against Christianity, but he found Jesus as I was driving around with him and would talk to him about God. And he gave his life to Jesus in my car and received healing, received miracles. And it was amazing. So there was purpose in that job, you know? So I was reverent before God and was like, and prayed in a way that was saying like, Lord, I believe that you don't want me to be full-time or that you don't want me to be nannying and that you want to be, me to be full-time ministry. I know that that's your will, Lord. And I believe you can do anything now. I believe you can, you can make it happen in any way. And so if this is your will, Lord, then I say yes. Like if this is your timing, yes. I speak those doors to open now. So it's that combination of being reverent to God and and not being forceful like in terms of that, being reverent to God, that it, God's in control. And when it comes to these things, he has his perfect timing. So not so being open and reverent to that, while at the same time, using that authority, prophesying what you know is God's will. I knew it was God's will for me to be full-time ministry eventually. So I was speaking that. And so that's the meaning of you have not because you ask not. We need to make sure that we're not only asking, we're still declaring. That's the meaning. So Five days later, after I prayed that prayer, um, my parents call me. They say that God has put on their heart to support me financially so I could be full-time ministry. Five days later. So God opened that door five days later. As soon as I prayed that prayer and God really convicted me, you have not because you asked not. You didn't have faith in that area. You needed to have faith in the area and ask for that thing for this to happen. I needed you to have faith for this, for me to release this to you. And I've been full-time ministry ever since that day. So God did that in a completely unlikely way. So when you pray, make sure you're praying with faith. Make sure you're not praying um, carnally, praying the way that things make sense. Um, I was praying how I thought it would make sense (laughs) when I needed to be praying outside of the box with faith that God could do exceedingly abundantly beyond whatever I can ask, think, dream, or imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also, also I want to mention um, that another important part of prayer is to pray in the Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is is a gift that God wants every believer to have. And if you've not received it, God's going to release it to you. And I believe he's going to release it to you through this live today. But with the baptism of the Holy Holy Spirit, God releases a gift, the gift of tongues. And that is to edify your spirit, man, to edify your spirit. So when your spirit is low and your carnal flesh is higher, uh, your soul, your feelings are not being spiritual, like naturally. They're like winning. You pray in the spirit and in the spiritual realm. The Bible says that the pray in the spirit, Praying in the spirit edifies your spirit. It edifies you. It builds you up. So it literally builds up your spirit and pushes down your flesh, pushes down your the carnal nature. So this is an important way to pray continually simply because of that factor alone, that it's this tool, this gift that God's giving you to help you push your flesh down and build your spirit man up. Uh, and, and when you pray in the spirit, when you're praying in tongues, you are speaking directly to God, directly to the Holy Spirit, and you are speaking God's will to be done. And the devil can't hear it. He can't understand it. You're speaking God's will to be done. That's powerful because sometimes we're praying not God's will, but you're praying for God's will to be done. So, um, it speaks in the Bible. Sometimes there's not words, but just moans of the spirit 
So sometimes maybe you don't know what to pray. Pray in the spirit and pray with that revelation that you are talking directly to God, that this is intimacy. Don't forget that important revelation. Carry that revelation. Renew your mind of that. As I'm praying in the spirit, I'm being intimate with Holy Spirit now, right now. And I'm speaking to him. We are communicating together. This is beautiful. So it says in the Bible, pray in the spirit uh, at all times, at all times, every day, make it, make it a habit. Don't make it, don't be religious about it, but be intentional. I I, when I'm in the car, I make the habit to pray in the spirit. When I'm in the, the shower, um, in the, in the plane, I can, I can do it quietly under my, under the mask in the plane. I can pray in the spirit. You can pray in the spirit at all times. So these are the ways to pray, the ways to pray effectively, the ways to pray that will touch God's heart the most. I want to take a couple questions. If you have any questions about prayer, I'll be looking in your comments for a little bit right now for a couple minutes. And then so you can just type them if you have them real quick right now. And then we're going to move on to Instagram live where I'm going to pray for people one-on-one. And when you pray, um, it's good to like re- remember what God's done for you and bring to remembrance what he's done for you and continually thank him. Like make that a practice to thank him, to remember what he's done for you, to remember his goodness and to thank him specifically for things in your life. Don't make it religiously. Don't make it the same religious prayer every time. But just like you would for a friend, like they continually help you out with something, you don't just say thank you one time, but you thank them again and again and again and again. Will this message be on YouTube? Yes, it's going to be on YouTube. It's on YouTube live right now and it will be saved as well. When praying in the spirit, do we need to understand what it means? No, many times we will not. Uh, uh, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is interpretation of tongues. That it says it's given to some. You don't need to understand what you're praying, but you're actually, what's so beautiful about the unknown tongue is that it, it it's completely faith that you are praying. Like, it can just sound like nonsense to yourself. It can sound like nothing. It can sound like blabbering. But you have faith that you know that you are praying powerful things, powerful words in the spiritual realm. And you are speaking to God. It's, it's a beautiful like new level of faith because it, it doesn't make sense. It's just faith. It's just faith that you are, that you are praying in the spirit. It cannot be... Con- uh, understood in any other way but by faith. So no, you don't need to understand. Many times you probably won't understand what you're saying and that's 
that's fine. The importance is of the praying in the spirit is to build up your spirit, man. Just, just doing it, the action of doing it, things are happening in the spiritual realm. It's not you knowing what's being said that's making your spirit man to rise up, but it's just the praying in the spirit that's making your spirit man to rise up. And for you to be praying God's will, whether you know it or not, it's God's will being done. Oh, praise God, Karina. She shared that, she, or I can't tell if it's Karina, Karina that their eczema in their hand is healed, I, I guess, by watching these lives. Um, I had it for almost nine years. Wow, praise God. Praise God. How to stay positive in a long-term unanswered prayer for signal, singleness and desiring a husband for 30 years now. Just rest knowing that God knows your heart. He knows the desires of your heart and his timing is perfect. It's different from our timing. It is so different. Um, the, I had many different plans for my life and God's, I mean, I've seen none of my plans happen. I've seen none of my timeline happen at all. They are different, but you can rest in God because he knows the desires of your heart. And it says in the Bible, delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight in him and rest. Know that he will give you the desires of your heart that, that are from him. Surrender everything so that any desire that's not of him goes and that his desires can be, can be released to you, can be come inside, come inside of your heart. But just don't focus on it too much and, and just focus on Jesus and try to get it. I mean, there's been major desires like family like that, honestly, for me that I had, that I would focus on so much. Like I want this so much. And God was wanting me to just surrender it. Like forget about it. Like, like not completely forget about the dream, but really put it on the back burner. Like no, take the dream and know like, God, I trust God with this. I believe wholeheartedly that this is going to happen. I really believe like he gave me this dream. I really believe it. I trust, I rest in him putting this on the back burner. I'm not going to look at it. Once in a while, I may thank God. Thank you, Lord, for that dream that you're going to make come to pass someday. I thank you for that, Lord. I remember that dream, but my focus is not there. I have dreams like I have dreams of, I had dreams of family, of having children and all that. And um, it's like now that I've surrendered these dreams, like, okay, God, I trust you. I want these things and I believe they're going to happen, but I just, I just give them to you. Just here you go. I surrender. What do you want me to focus on right now? What are dreams that you want for me that I don't have, I didn't have yet? Like I didn't have this dream of ministry at all. What I'm doing now was not a dream. It was God's dream completely. But when I surrendered these things, um, it made room for him to put additional dreams. Not that those things are, dreams are going away, but additional dreams and even bigger dreams that God wanted me to have. So now I'm like so focused that there's not even room to long for those other dreams that I once longed for. They're still there. They're on the back burner. I thank God once in a while for them. But most of the time, I'm, I'm too busy thanking God for all the crazy blessings presently that are happening <laughs> in my life even to, you know, even think about it right now. Um, so when you surrender, God, God will amaze you with what he the peace he brings you and the surprise he'll bring you with that dream that he has not forgotten about that will come. Hallelujah. His timing is the best. His timing is the best. Many times we want something right now, but God has something here for you and it's the best. But you're like, I want this right now. But if you settle, then you're settling for so much less than what God has for you here. You can't see my hands up here on the screen. So many times we want something here. And God has something here that's the best. And we want to settle for this, but then we, ha then we miss out on the best. So it's really just better to wait for God's timing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
God wants to release his spirit upon all of you now. And he wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Those of you who have never received this gift, it's time to receive this gift right now. God's going to baptize you with his fire and give you the gift of tongues so you can pray to him in, an, in another new precious way and build up your spirit, man, and experience new intimacy and the fire of God. Hallelujah. So just surrender to God right now, all of you. Just surrender to him because God is going to pour out a fresh spirit upon you. And for those of you receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all that God wants is surrender. It comes with surrender. When you really are surrendering everything, your dreams, your plans, and you just want God. You're in that place of desperation where Jesus, I want all that you are nothing holding back and I want to give you everything so just tell God right now just surrender to God right now and tell him these things speak to him now with your own words tell him right now I surrender to you God I want you to take my whole life my dreams my plans everything I want you to take them all Lord I give them all to you I want your will for my life I want your plans for my life and nothing else. I give you my dreams. I trust you with my dreams for you to do what you want with them. I trust you. I give everything to you. Tell him that. Tell him that now. You can tell him with your own words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Shiamano surya shikia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I baptize you now in the Holy Spirit. Receive his fire. May it overflow out of you. May you be filled to overflow with the fire of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Hanamana shuria barasikia rohoro baria valia monosuria. Shea manosura harabakia manosuria lia manoshukia. Hallelujah. Keep surrendering to God and surrender your tongue. As you speak out, God will fill your mouth. As you surrender even your tongue, your praise to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I declare every spirit of religion to go now in Jesus' name. And all of the religious ways that you wrongly viewed God that made you distant from him. I speak that to all leave you now in Jesus' name. And all of that wrong religious doctrine you had in you, that religious trauma or just that trauma of feeling condemnation and shame, thinking that God was condemning you because you weren't being a good enough Christian, because you weren't praying enough, or you weren't praying the right ways, or you weren't praying long enough. All of that trauma, I speak that all to leave you now in Jesus' name. All condemnation, shame, guilt must go. Those wrong perspective of seeing God, that wrong perspective must go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If you filled with God's love now and his peace and his joy, his grace, he has compassion, he has mercy, he has understanding, he is gentle, he is kind. Receive the love of God now in Jesus' name. May your spiritual eyes open up to see God rightly, to see his amazing love for you. May you have a real and beautiful and intimate relationship with God from today like never before. May you have the most amazing relationship with God better than any person you have on this earth from today. Thank you, Jesus. May you hear him and see him and feel him and know him deeply in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with new levels of his spirit now. In Jesus' name, be filled with this anointing of God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm excited for your relationship with God, how it will transform into something so beautiful like never before from today and that you would feel intimacy with him like never before and that you would become like him like never before. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to transition now onto Instagram where I'm going to bring some people on to pray one-on-one. And so those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, I'm going to stop the stream in a bit. You can head on over to Instagram to be a part of the live and to watch God move in power and to receive, to receive. Because every, every word that's being declared has anointing that's going to touch you, not just the person one-on-one, but it's time for you to receive every single one of you that's on this stream, this live stream right now. Hallelujah. So I'm going to head on over to Instagram now. I'll see you all there.